Is the Quran talking about the writings of Paul? Is the Quran talking about the writings of Jude, James, or the book of Acts, for example? Is the Quran talking about these books when the Quran uses the word gospel? Of course not. The Quran doesn't even address these writings because these writings, even the Christians believe, are not from Jesus Christ, let alone from God Almighty. So it is very, very clear that our interlocutors, in this case David Wood and Co., are being very, very disingenuous to the Christian community. They are not honest with you. They, they're not telling you the truth uh, about the fact of the matter. And they do not respect you, let alone love you. They do not have any respect for the Christians because they are deliberately lying to the Christian community. It is very unfortunate that so many thousands of Christians out there have to listen to these lies. I, I, yeah. didn't, I didn't say that the gospel refers to the book of James, the letters of Paul, um, and the book of Acts. I didn't say that. He says, aha, is it talking about these books? No, these Christians are being disingenuous. I never said that. Uh, my view is that the Quran must at least be affirming the fourfold gospel, right? That which So the four gospels treated as a unit from the second century on were called the fourfold gospel or simply the gospel. The gospel is the good news. It's a spoken, it can be a spoken message. So you can say, hey, he came preaching the gospel or he had the gospel, right? You can have that, you can have that, you can have that as the gospel. But if you're talking about a text, a, a book that was called the gospel from the second century onward, that was the fourfold gospel or Matthew, Mark, Luke and John treated as a unit in it as a text, right? As a book, right? So I would say the Quran must at least be affirming that. If it isn't, then it is hopelessly unclear what it is talking about. That's my position. Sam, we also know that Muslims, when or the early Muslim community, when they were asked, uh, hey, where's Muhammad mentioned in the Torah? They would sometimes quote something like Isaiah. Right? Yes, they would. So they, so it was clear that in the Muslim community, there were people who interpreted Torah as not just these five books of Moses, but as a larger work, perhaps something yes, like the New Testament. So following that, I think you could make a case that when it's saying gospel as a text, it's just referring to, and especially when it's referring to Christians as the people of the book and referring to the text, I think you could make the case that if Torah didn't just mean for the Muslim community of Torah didn't just mean books of Moses and could mean later works that weren't revealed to Moses, then I think you can make the same case. However, yeah. um, I would not I would not be dogmatic on that. I would not say yes when when the Quran says uh, gospel, it's it's referring to the letters of Paul or the letters of uh, James. I would I would not make that claim. I'd say you could yeah. make you could make an argument, but I wouldn't be firm on it. So when Adnan is saying, no, this is their position, this is why they're lying to you, uh, straw man, massive, yeah. massive straw man. Either he's ignorant or he's, again, being <clears throat> cunning, conniving, because the Quran itself affirms that Allah, again, I put in quotation marks, because I don't believe that Allah, the Quran is a true God, sent many messengers that are not mentioned by name. Let me give you the reference. Chapter 4, verses 163-164 of the Quran. As a faithful Muslim, he cannot... Well, again, he's going to appeal to the Hadith, so that's a different story because he's a Sunni Muslim. But since the challenge is to show us from the Quran, and we can go into the Hadith, and the Hadith won't help him. But again, let's first establish the Quran doesn't help him. It backfires against him, which is why he has to run to the Hadith. Nowhere in the Quran does it say there were no messengers sent after Jesus. Nowhere in the Quran does it say that Jesus' disciples did not function as messengers inspired by God to convey the gospel of Jesus Christ. He's assuming this because he's reading later Islamic theology or later traditions into his reading of the Quran. But let me show you what the Quran does say, folks. We have revealed to thee as we revealed to Noah and the prophets after him, and we revealed to Abraham, Ishmael, Isaac, Jacob and the tribes, Jesus and Job, Jonah and Aaron, and Solomon, and we gave to David Psalms. Now notice 4.164. And messengers we have already told thee of before, and messengers we have not told thee of. So the Quran even says, Allah sent more messengers that have been named in the Quran. Now here's where Adnan is stuck. He believes that a messenger, a Rasul, is someone who's given scripture. Since there are many messengers unnamed, how does he know 
that those messengers do not include Peter, Paul, and James. And how does he know that what they wrote are not scriptures produced by Wahi, revelation from Allah? When the Quran says there are many messengers we have sent that we haven't told you of, and according to a Sunni theology, a messenger is one who's given a scripture. That's part of his tradition. But it gets worse for Adnan. It gets even worse for Adnan. Chapter 5, verse 66 and 68, which David always quotes, had they performed the Torah and the gospel and what was sent down to them from the Lord. Folks, right there, end of story. It says, had the Jews and Christians performed the Torah and the gospel and what was sent down to them. Uh, excuse me, Adnan, if this is now addressing the Christian and Jewish communities respectfully, respectively, and it's saying to them, now, don't just follow the Torah and gospel, but all that's revealed to you. You're telling me that a Christian is going to sit back and say, oh, but Peter's not revealed. John isn't revealed. Revelation is not revealed. Paul's letters are. If we take this passage at face value, it's addressing a group at a specific time in history. It's historical context. Muhammad is addressing Jews and Christians. The Christians have the 27 books of the New Testament, and they believe all of it is revealed. So the passage should have said, had they performed the torn gospel only, only that, nothing else, everything else ignored. But no, it says, had they performed the torn the gospel was sent down to them from their Lord, they would have eaten both what was above them and what was beneath their feet. Some of them are a just nation, but many of them evil are the things they do. Now notice 68. Say, O people of the book, Ahl al kidab you do not stand on anything until you perform the Torah and the gospel. And what was sent down to you from your Lord? So the question is, Christians, the Quran is saying, hold fast to the Torah and gospel what was sent down to you. Was there anything else sent down to you? Yes. The books of the New Testament that the Holy Spirit inspired through the apostles and their companions, backed up by Jesus from heaven, with signs and wonders. So if I follow this passage, Muhammad just told me, follow all of my New Testament, reject none of it. And there is no debate that in the seventh century, David, no debate historically, that the Christians agree as a whole that the 27 books of the New Testament are the words of God. I, he may refer to a fringe group, maybe the Syriac church, but the church as a whole, apart mm -hmm. from a fringe group here or there, accepted the 27 books of the New Testament and even the Syriac church, meaning the church of my ancestors, accepted 22. So even if we go with their canon, it's more than the gospel at Nan. Why didn't you quote these passages? And let alone what the commentary said, David, we need to do a session on this, on chapter 36, verses 13 following, because according to the commentators, the three messengers who were sent to the city were Peter, John, and Paul, according mm -hmm. to the commentators, but I want to stick to the Quran. Boom!